when they lose all their wealth or they lose their loved ones or their job and they feel that they've got no future, when they lose all connection with life, they commit suicide. One of the main reasons is because they, didn't ha they do not have a belief, an iman, in a life after here. And therefore, they don't, they don't know why they're here. And so they can create their own purpose. A lot of them create their own purpose. And some of the purposes they create is family. I'm here for my family. That's a small purpose of life. But that's not the whole purpose of why you're here on earth. Because if that was the whole purpose, then Allah will keep us living forever here. Why is there death? Why does Allah take members of the family before... What, and it's strange how some people say, before their time. What does that mean? He went before his time. It's as though we knew when everyone's going to die. What do you mean before his time? Death has no age. And this life is not paradise. And we're not meant to stay here. We are here for a different reason. We are here to grow our here after. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and He will judge us in the hereafter because He is the just one. He knows where we're going to be, but we don't know where we're going to be. So in order that we don't argue with God on the day of judgment, Allah says, you can go through the life and see it for yourself. And on the day of judgment, your whole life will be reversed. You will see yourself from the moment you died, you will see everything going backwards. You're living and it's all, you're reliving the moments until you are a baby. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you from that so you can stay alive. So you don't return back until nothingness. You see it all. Forwards and then backwards. Everything. And so people who deny their hands and their feet and their eyes and their ears and all of that will bear witness that you did it. There is no running away on that day. But before that day comes, there are signs. And it's quite unusual that some people, they say, I didn't have a sign before I died. Everyone has a sign before they died. Die. Everyone. Everyone. But these signs are different. They come in various forms. Some people have immediate signs of death before they die, such as illness, such as even spiritual feelings. Others, they don't have any of these signs. It just hits them like that. But the signs I'm talking about is time. Time. As time progresses, as you grow in age, you're actually getting smaller in age. Every minute that we grow, we're actually getting, our life is getting shorter. And therefore... Time is one of the signs. Age is another. White hair is another. Wrinkles. And the Prophet ﷺ said, everything has a cure, except for two things. Everything has a cure. Every illness has a cure. If you find it, he'll be cured. Except for two things. Death and age, old age. You can't reverse it. All those commercials you see on television about Nivea and this cream or that cream. I don't know their names, but, you know, all these creams telling you because, you know, your life and they put these women and men up there as though they have this really fresh skin. It's, that, that's, that's a lie. It's, they're just deceiving you. There's no cure for old age. The other signs of the world's end, my dear brothers and sisters, are literal signs that the Prophet ﷺ told us. When I say literal, meaning they are real. But their descriptions are really unknown to us in, 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 in detail. But they are actual things that are going to happen if, that, that will be shared by everyone. So there's specific signs for yourself and there are common signs for everyone else. They are the signs of the last hour. I'm not going to go through them in detail today because that's not our topic. But I'm just going to go through it, focusing on the world's end. We're talking about the hereafter. This world ending shows us that when Allah says, 
that everything's going to die, it means everything in this world, including the world itself. Allah says in the Quran, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything on it will perish. The only thing that will be left is your Lord. The presence of your Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in several verses that the world and the sky will perish. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, الدُّنْيَا فَانِيَا The world is going to perish. A man asked him again, when is the last hour? He said, don't ask about that. What have you prepared for it? But the point is, they're asking because the Prophet had told them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the world's going to end. Allah says, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ The earth, the world, and the sky will be changed. From the world and the sky you knew once to another world and sky. Meaning Allah is going to destroy it and recreate another, different to it. Destroy it, make another one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He replies to those who deny the end and resurrection by saying, look at the life that you live in now. وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُرْسِلُ الرِّيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ حَتَّى إِذَا, أق... حتى إذا أَقَلَّتْ سَحَابًا ثِقَالًا سُقْنَاهُ لِبَلَدٍ مَيِّتٍ فَأَنزَلْنَا بِهِ الْمَاءَ فَأَخْرَجْنَا بِهِ مِنْ كُلِّ الثَّمَرَاتِ كَذَلِكَ نُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَى لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ أو تذكرون. So Allah SWT says, look at the way we created the life as an example of why, how we are going to resurrect you. Look at how we send winds and clouds as a good sign for you of mercy so you can have water so you can grow your crops and eat when the clouds fill up we take it to a land that is dead land that has no crops nothing it's dry drought and from it we bring back life of fruits كذلك, just like that Allah says كذلك, just like that or similar to that we will raise the dead people. I say to Allah says, I say this to you in the hope that you may remember and reflect. So there are many signs or ayat of this. And Allah says, Kalla Behold, you shall be resurrected. The signs are many. There are minor signs and major signs. As for the minor signs, they began when? Who knows when they began? The minor signs of the closeness of the world's end. The death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Naam, his death. So that's 1,437 years ago now. To us it seems a long time. But I want to say two things. If you're 10 years old, 30 years old, 40, 50, 60, you know, in your mind, you know it was a long time ago. But how do you feel? You feel like it was only yesterday. Isn't that right? 60 years, 100 years, it feels like just yesterday. In your mind you know it was a long time ago. But feeling, it's only a little bit. If you lived for a thousand years, wallahi, it's going to feel the same. There's a narration about Nuh alayhi salam. He lived for a thousand and about 150 or up to 1,350 years. Different narrations, but more than a thousand years. And on his deathbed, the people asked him, how, did you, how do you feel living all this long time? And he says, it's like, he said, it's like a person opened a door, took a step to the other side and then closed the door. And he's trying to say that it's, you don't even feel it. It just passes like that. So whether you're now or in 30 years time, it's the same thing. You're going to feel the same as now. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, اقترب للناس حسابهم وهم في غفلة يلعبون. The day of accountability has come very close to the people while the people are in, are in an illusion of their own. غفلة, they're forgetful of it. They're too busy to away from it. يلعبون, they're playing, they're playing around. Allah says, do you not 
consider that when the day comes, it may come to you while you are playing, or while you are just in ghafla, forgetfulness, or unaware. So when the world ends, brothers and sisters, it will be a time where the majority of the people of the world are going to be in losthood, forgetfulness, ghafla, meaning unaware, too busy with imaginations and illusions and things, ideas they've made up. People will be busy in their world of music. Why do I say music? Because the music has an extraordinary effect on the mind and the heart. People listen to it to get out of misery and sadness and get out of the reality of life. But it doesn't take them towards good. It doesn't take them towards God. It doesn't take them towards the Quran. It doesn't take them towards going and doing you know, good deeds. They'll just do what the song tells them to do. If it's love, they'll live love. If it tells them about death, they'll probably commit suicide. If it tells them about Satanism, they'll go and worship Satan. Whatever the song tells them, they start living it. Some people are living in a world of money. So they try to bring up all this money and try to live in it. They're in that ghafla. They want to forget about death. So they're busy with luxury, entertainment and all of that stuff. And others are busy with other things. Addicted to drugs, addicted to desires of their own. The point is, Allah says, the last hour will come when people are in that ghafla. They're, too, they're busy with some type of illusion in this world that makes them unaware of why they're here. That's a temporary. And Allah says in the Quran about these types of people to the Prophet Wasallam, when the Prophet tried to call them and and teach them and he would tell them please listen to me I want to save you and, and a lot of them wouldn't listen Allah is said to him the following verses let them let them eat and let them entertain themselves and let them play and let false hope delude them and he let their hopes of whatever their ideas are, let it delude them. Let it take over their minds for a little temporary while. At the end of it, they're soon going to come to know the reality. It's going to face them. It's going to grab them. It's going to face them right in the face. And they can't run away from it. So Allah says, let them eat, let them drink, let them entertain themselves, let them play, let them be in their losthood, whoever they are. Let them... Uh, and look what Allah says. وَيُلْهِهِمُ amal And let hope... Busy them. What's hope? Hope is good in Islam. Allah tells us have good hope in Allah, have good hope in His mercy. Well, that's not the hope that the Quran is talking about. Saying let hope, meaning they've made up their ideas. They don't want to learn, they don't want to hear about heaven and hell, they don't want to hear about death, they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to... It's talking about those who follow their desires and so they begin to fill or they begin to inter... or fill their, their, their life with busyness of other things. Hope for let's say, I don't know, to be rich in the future, hope to um, uh, be this or be that or receive this or receive that in this world. Hope to live longer. Hope to just keep going. Yani, let me give you an example. I'm sitting in this room one time and there in a work area and I hear this person, he says, oh, you know, look, yeah, talking... I'm going, we're going to retire. You know, you're, he's talking about retirement and superannuation and all that stuff. SubhanAllah. What is it? Probably about 40 years old. Saying, you know, can't wait. You know, the retirement when we're 60 years old, then we retire. And he goes, it's scary. And then, and then you know, they were talking about it and saying things like, oh, but you know, but, you know life expectancy is about 70, 80 years old if you're healthy. So it's you know, another 20 years or 25 years more after retirement. That's a long time, you know, you get to... And this person is having this hope where he doesn't even know what's going to happen to him tomorrow. Allah says, let hope delude them. Yani, don't practice your deen. Don't come to, uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep in with, your, with your bad desires because you have this false hope that you're still going to live for longer. Later on you'll repent. Later on you'll become a good person. Later on you'll, you'll busy yourself with all these things. Later on, later on. For now, you're still young. They're still young. وَيُلْهِهِمُ amal. This is what it means. Let... You know, this hope of, oh, you're going to still live longer later on, later on, later on. Let that busy them. And really, wallahi, it's just a busyness. 
The shaitan is just busying these people. How many people, death came to them like that while they still had that hope at the age of 20, the age of 30, the age of 15? And they're still saying, when I'm 70, when I'm 80. And there's this cultural idea in my culture, I don't know about your culture, that hajj should be done when you're 60 or 50 or 70. What's this? How do you know you're going to live till then? Hajj is compulsory at any time, like any other compulsory act. Like your prayers, like your fasting. So the minor signs in this world come to people while they are in ghafla. And these are one of the minor signs. That people begin to drift off. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, people will begin to busy themselves with story, um, uh, imaginative stories. And imaginative, t- imaginative tales. And they begin to make up imaginative tales to the point where people will begin to question if there is an existence of a God. That's a hadith. What does this mean? Really, look at our state today. A lot of people, I mean, the movie industry is growing huge. Now people are burning CDs and movies and there are more and more. I mean, don't ask the Muslims, ask non-Muslim experts who talk about the lifestyle of people these days. Look at it. People are more inside of home than outside. Children are more on the television than outside getting physical. Ask your parents how physical they used to be outside and now it's more indoors in front of that TV. LCD screens are getting bigger and bigger. Plasma TVs, you can see it. People are focusing on the quality of what they want to see and hear. You go out to the store and you don't know what to buy. You think I'm going to spend $300 on a TV and you end up spending $4,000. Why? Because this TV has a slightly better picture than this TV. Or this TV has got a slightly higher resolution than this TV. What I'm trying to say is that one of the minor signs of the last hour is that this world of entertainment, this illusion that we want to live in, has become a priority in a lot of people's lives. Really. Am I wrong? So inside, this, this world of illusion. And the TV has become the world of illusion. And then they want all the nice stereo system around them. The ones, the little tweeters that get, and the ones that bring out the other noises that go, as if you're living in there. They want to live outside of the realm of this world. They want to get out of this world. It's true. And they want to live outside of this world. They don't want to live in it. It's another form of intoxication, if you like, but on a smaller scale. Now, if you can monitor it and manage it, it's okay, inshallah. I'm not telling you to be a, one of those Muslims who um, don't think I'm weird now, but I'm telling you that use it in a halal way, but try and don't be extravagant. And I just want you to realize that it can really get people addicted to all these things. They're running away from this world. And we are getting into that hope of illusions. And when you watch these people, these people who are watching all these movies and everything, Movies are now dictating what people think and believe. I mean, I've heard young people say to me, this is a new form of counseling, which I have to know. I've never counseled this way before, wallahi. And it's only in the past year. Students and young people telling me, what if there is another world? What if there is another reality? What if? What if? They don't know what they're talking about, but these... Imaginations, especially in movies, have made people think about other things that could possibly, and they said they make up their imagination. And so long as they know that other people are thinking like them, they think, yeah, there's a possibility. It's nice to think like that. It's nice to think that when we die, we become ghosts and we just roam around the world. It's nice. You know, we're just a ghost, and then you walk towards the end of the, the tunnel, there's a light there, and, and, par- and there's heaven on the clouds, and all those things and um, I don't know Lord of the Rings and, and um, I don't know Sixth Sense and uh, I don't know you name it all these other imaginations the world of the zombies <clears throat> reincarnation and so on so these are the minor signs and now even some a lot of people are questioning whether there really is a God Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, among the, I'm just mentioning the most significant minor signs that we are encountering now 
and a lot of us are living it and we don't even realize it. Another minor signs is that, just in general, the balance, there is an imbalance in the whole world, imbalance in societies, imbalance in morals, imbalance in ideologies and methodologies, imbalance in nature, like imbalance in environment. You could see it. Global warming is one of them. But on a more subtle scale, the imbalance of our morals. Look at it. Look at how much shame has lost its value. 